Agent Cassidy here. Now, a good steak makes for a happy belly, right? And a good steak begins with a happy cow. So we have traveled all the way down here to Uruguay for a very important mission. Right here is where the journey of Boloco's grass-fed beef begins. First, let's get one burning question out of the way. What the heck are we doing in Uruguay? Couldn't we just get our steak from the U.S.? Isn't buying local always the right thing to do? Are we really doing the right thing? We were hoping to find the answers in Uruguay. Meet Dana Ehrlich. He's watched and studied how cattle are raised in both the U.S. and South America. He loved the process here in Uruguay so much, he made a business out of it. I started Verde Farms in 2005 after living in both Argentina and Uruguay and I absolutely loved the beef and wanted to discover what was different about the beef in South America versus the beef in North America. And he saw one huge difference. Beef here is raised 100% grass fed in a very natural pristine environment. In the U.S., cattle usually start their lives on small farms like they do in Uruguay but 97% of them are sent to giant factory feedlots when they're only 12 to 18 months old. They're packed into a confined area where they eat grain, not grass, and they're much more likely to get sick. They're given lots of antibiotics and growth hormones so they can avoid disease and gain weight faster. About six months later, they're rushed to the slaughterhouse. And here's something we found very surprising. The way we raise most cattle in the U.S. would literally be against the law in Uruguay. It's all 100% grass-fed, no hormones, no antibiotics. In Uruguay, the cattle are raised on a farm for their entire lives, eating grass without injections of hormones or antibiotics, and they have plenty of room to roam around. On average, each cow in Uruguay has two acres all to itself. Now this is all interesting, but what about the quality of the beef? And how does it taste? At Boloco, the steak we use in our burritos and bowls is known as flat meat, the thin cut from the bottom sirloin butt. To most of us, that doesn't mean much. But what matters is that this is the highest quality steak used in the burrito business. It's tender, it's tasty, it's awesome. And because it's grass-fed, it's healthier too. 50% less fat and calories than conventional grain-fed beef. And it's full of vitamins. And finally, the clincher. If we got the same quality of meat from responsibly raised animals in the US, the price of our burritos would skyrocket. And that's without guacamole. So at this point, we're feeling pretty good about our choice to import our steak from Uruguay. But of course, there's always more to learn. So the cattle live a happy life here on the ranch for about two to three years. But the reality is, in order to get inside Boloco's delicious burritos, they have to head to their next destination, the slaughterhouse. Welcome to Tacuarembó, a city five hours north of Uruguay's capital, Montevideo, and just south of the Brazilian border. In this plant, they slaughter 1,100 heads of grass-fed cattle each day, making steak, hamburgers, beef jerky, and other beef products. It's pretty intense in here. So intense that we're going to spare you most of what we experienced because we don't want to unnecessarily upset you. But inside the plant, we did learn a lot. First, we learned there are slaughterhouses with workers who care deeply about animals, like this one. It has a strict animal welfare program, monitored by a government employee. But it goes much further than that. There's an animal science expert named Temple Grandin, her autism allowed her to somewhat relate to the feelings cows were experiencing throughout their lives and leading up to their death. Her findings have led to massive changes in many slaughterhouses all over the world. She visited this very plant in Tacuarembó in 2004 and 2008 and helped them make positive changes for the sake of the animals. She made simple changes, like having the cattle walk in a curve rather than a straight line, which makes them less stressed and more calm. The ramp they walk up is made in a way that's easier for them to walk on, and the cattle are cleaned with flowing water as they go. This helps the cattle experience a peaceful and humane end of life. It's less than 60 minutes before the individual parts of cows walking around outside are perfectly sectioned out and packaged up. Then once the beef is frozen, it's ready to be taken from the slaughterhouse to the port, or El Puerto de Montevideo. In all of these giant boxes are different products about to be shipped all over the world, including, in some of them, steak that's about to hit the open ocean for four weeks before landing into the USA and heading into Boloco's restaurants. It's a long journey before the steak hits American soil and eventually Boloco. Then we marinate the steak in a spice mix of chipotle chili powder, coriander, cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, kosher salt, oregano, and a sprinkle of sugar for 12 hours. Then we grill it and chop it up into bite-sized pieces for optimum burrito eating enjoyment. 
Yes, it's a long process to get our stake from here to here. And we still have work to do to calculate the true carbon footprint. But we do know this, if nothing else. Our friends at Verde Farms and in Tacuarembo make it possible for us to provide you, our guests, with the highest quality, most delicious, most tender, naturally and responsibly raised steak option possible. All at a price you, our guests, can stomach. This steak is clearly globally inspired.